Welcome to Allie's Attic Show, where you never know what kind of surprise you'll find in my attic. I'm your host, Allie, and today my surprise is a female rapper who currently resides in Baltimore, Maryland. Please welcome Caramel. Hello. Hey, how are you, Allie? How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. It's Friday. <laughs> exactly. Friday's rock. Okay, so I want to hear all about you, but I just want to tell you... Um, because obviously I listen to people's music before I decide if they're going to come on the show or whatever. I mean, usually it's always a yes. But I, I always listen. When I first listened to your music, I got two different bands that popped in my head. One was Salt and Pepper, and one was TLC. So we'll talk more about that as we go along. Because then I read your bio and find out found Salt and Pepper is one of your influences. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> Um, so we'll talk about that as we uh, go through the interview. But basically, Caramel, tell me, like, when did you start doing this? When did you decide, you know what, this is what I want to do? And I know you didn't start off doing rap. You started off doing kind of like R&B, right? And the saxophone. Yes, yeah, so, it's so funny. Uh, so basically, you know, when growing up, you know, I'm originally from Chesapeake, Virginia. Um, so I'm not... Um, from Maryland, exactly, but, you know, shout out to 757, I always have to say that. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> basically, um, I started out as an R&B head. Um, it may, may sound a little cliche, but, you know, I used to um, go uh, for drives to North Carolina on the weekends with my parents, and they were always playing, like, Al Green and Stevie Wonder, and I was like, wow, this is, like, so amazing, but I was, like, seven to eight years old just vibing to this, you know, this music, you know, mm -hmm. so... Um, upfront music to me, like just that, that style of genre was just like so fascinating to me. So around like age 11, I was like, you know what, I'm going to start writing, you know, I, I can write you a tune and stuff like that. So I started writing, um, like, uh, upbeat tempos, um, R&B tunes. Um, and then I really got started getting serious with it, um, yeah, between 11 and 12. And then, um, I took on the saxophone because my brother, um, you know, he was playing the saxophone um, in high school, and we would go to, like, his marching band um, events and things like that. So he kind of put me on to, like, Nige and Kenny D. And so when, by the time I got to, like, fifth grade, you know, I was able to uh, pick an instrument, you know, for band. I had to do, like, an electro. I was like, I want to be like my brother. I want to play the saxophone. So I started playing the alto sax in sixth grade. Oh, well, Kenny G is one of my favorite artists. Just so you know, I the saxophone oh, yeah. <laughs> the saxophone does something to me. It just oh, I love it. Um, okay, so you also you became intrigued with Miami bass, right? Is it bass or ba bass? Yep. Bass is yep. the fish. Okay, I'm tired. Um, down south and hip hop music <laughs> with influences like. Luke, Salt and Peppa, Tupac, Lauren Hill, Slick Slick, no Slick Rick, <laughs> a, ti a tribe called Quest, and Sixty Nine Boys, and that's kind of where. Well, first, you also you got to go perform, um, saxophone. Where did you go to perform that? And you came in third in your. Where? I missed that. Now, where is it? Oh, yeah, here we go. So you went to play for the All City Band, and you were ranked third chair overall. It, be playing the saxophone, right? Right. So basically how that worked. So back uh, when I started band, sixth grade, my first year, which I didn't know what the heck was all, you know, all state band, all state uh, city band, all city band. And so basically um, it's based on the different schools and like your um, different averages and things like that because we would get tested just because we were also just playing in a band and learning an instrument, it was also through about technique and style. And so we would get tested like every few weeks uh, just to make sure that we are learning the curriculum uh, properly and so forth. So um, I was pretty much, you know, I'm not bragging or nothing like that, but majority of the time it was between me and uh, this other uh, boy um, um, that we would always, it was me, RJ, it was um, this other guy, Jeff, so we would always be going back and forth, back and forth, you know, so, but the majority of the time, I did beat the guys, <laughs> you know, I'm going to say that, girl power, because uh, I was first chair majority of the time that year. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> and if they're out there and they hear me, I know they're going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> that is so but, cool. Um, <laughs> but it's true, it's facts. <laughs> <laughs> it's facts. Okay, so... Um, so, but yeah, so all city, basically, um, they go around and the actual teachers get to pick who are the top um, students at each, um, 
you know, um, I guess instrument, as you want to say, like whether it's the flute, the drums, whatever. And so they were based on that, based on your grades, based on your technique, your style, and your skill. You get placed in an all-city band. You get to play, actually, um, for, like, you know, your whole community. So, yeah, my first year, I was third all-city in the whole city of Chesapeake um, that year. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so then that's when you became interested in all these other bands. Um, and that's where your style of rhythmical writing took off. And you made it into your own career and started off as an indie artist. Yes. Now, you, I mean, all indie artists struggle with trying to get on a major label. And it's hard. It's, I mean, I'm not an artist. I don't know. I just know from talking to people. Um, so after years of trying to get on with a major label, you kind of just gave up. Yeah, I mean, you know, of course, like, you know, while you're in high school and things like that, you know, you can, you know, my parents was to the point where oh, it's time for you to go to college or you need to get a job or do, you know, you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, back then I really didn't have a lot of support when it came to doing music. You know, it was more of like, oh, it's a hobby type of thing, you know, but eventually, you know, you got to get a real job or you need to go to college and get a degree. Um, you know, and that's how my family kind of was at the time in reference to that. Mm -hmm. um, so, Pretty much, uh, yeah, I, I, and also, too, I got tired. It is very uh, challenging. There has been a couple of times, like, where it was, like, almost there, but everything, every time something would fall through, mm -hmm. you know, and I never understood at the time. You know, there was a couple of R&B groups that my friends and I formed, and I also had formed with other people, and we would get, you know, we would, we would get almost there where we would be in the studio. We had proper management, even for this last time. I'm proud to me going solo as a rap artist. Um, and, you know, things just fell through. People thought wasn't taking it seriously. So, you know, eventually after the last time, um, I was just like, you know what, forget it. It's time for me to, be, to do, you know, something solo. Mm -hmm. I tried for a couple of years. And then, you know, nothing was happening, you know. And then also, too, it's, it's different when you don't have, like, that support system. Mm -hmm. you Definitely, know, it, yeah. It does make a, a difference. And I don't know if you ever heard that from other indie artists. Oh, um, God, yeah. <laughs> you got to have the proper, you know, support system. Family, yeah. friends, something. You do. Um, and that's very important. It, and so, yeah, so pretty much, you know, I was like, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to give up. You know, I'm going to stop. Let me go ahead and, you know, focus on school more and get this degree and go ahead and get a 9 to 5. And so that's, you know, and I always said, I said, okay, God, if I am meant to do music, you know, you know, then I guess it'll be your, your time and, you know, when you want me to do it. So, yeah, I, I actually gave up music back in, like, 2003. And you know what? You're not the first artist that I heard has done that and then decided, I'm, you know what, I want to do this. I'm coming back. And once you hung up your microphone, you um, spent time working as a special education teacher and also in fitness. And you're still in fitness, right? Right. So, yeah. So, my uh, original degree is in developmental disabilities. So, I actually um, worked into the special education field and I taught for um, almost like, you know, a little over like almost eight years. Um, and, you know, that was very uh, awarding, you know, it's very, very rewarding to me. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, like, I wanted to do something different, so, and I always loved fitness and exercise and things like that, so I actually went to, like, Northern Virginia Community College and um, got my certification originally uh, through them, and from there, I've been doing fitness since 2005. Wow. And you started a health and wellness business um, in 2008 which became very successful throughout the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area for about five years. And then during the mid-2013 economic slowdown and the federal government's um, sequestration, I can't even say that word, sequestration, yeah. there we go, good Lord, um, cutbacks forced you to close the family business. And that led to like not just the sudden loss of income, but also the floor foreclosure on your home and filing for bankruptcy. Yes, and you know it's um it's one of those things where you it's like um it's first off it's like a, a shock to the system you know yeah you're you know you're successful and you have things going and you're trying to do the right things you know 
And um, yeah, um, pretty much things turned for the worst. And yeah, I got to the point, honestly, where for, for me and uh, my family, uh, I, you know, I was no longer paying myself, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I was making sure that my staff was taken care of and things like that. And, um, yeah, it was just one of those tough times in my life where I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I can appreciate that, that um, storm, so to speak, mm -hmm. because I did make it through. Mm -hmm. And, it, like I said, I learned a lot. It's a life lesson, and I know how to go forward. Um, to not be able to, you know, so I won't be in that situation ever again. Exactly. And I mean, it makes you stronger. Everything that you go through makes you stronger. Um, now, as you were attempting to get back on your feet, you were hit with another blow. Um, you were diagnosed with, I'm going to say this wrong, I knew it, um, ductal carcinoma in site two, which is DCIS. Yes. Oh, I said it right? <laughs> yep, you said Yay, it right. I said right. it right. Uh, DCIS for short, yes, so that's correct. <laughs> and it's considered the earliest form of breast cancer, correct? Yes, and, um, you know, that actually was a little shock to me because, you know, you know, once you, when they say how the saying goes, when it rains, it pours. Yeah. So, you know, us going through the whole process of the bankruptcy, the foreclosure, all this, and then, you know, we finally, you know, not, you know, we're still going through that, was going through that process at the time. And, you know, we were transitioning, you know, um, during that situation, you know, I, you know, I just didn't, something wasn't right. And, you know, as, you know, you could probably say this too and vouch for me, women know their bodies. Oh, know? God, we yeah. Know, we yeah. know. We know. We our bodies. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, so, yeah, so in um, summer, late summer of 2015, um, yeah, I actually went to the doctor because um, I just it didn't feel right. It, I didn't feel, um, you know, I knew something was going on. And so originally um, the doctor thought it was um, um, something else like precancerous cells maybe or something of that nature with it, which is monitoring it. But when they actually did the biopsy and everything, they, um, they realized um, – that it was uh, DCIS, and basically, yeah, DCIS is like a um, non-invasive cancer, mm -hmm. which, thank goodness, that means that it's still an abnormal cells, um, and it's like found in the line of the breast milk duct. Okay. But it has not spread. So, luckily, I went when I did because had I waited, like when I'm 40, like they advise women to go to do their first mammogram, you know, yeah, it would have been a totally a different like. Story. And so I'm just glad that I went. It was caught in, on, in time, and it was, you know now it's all about just early prevention and and keeping healthy now. You know, yeah. And I advise. I tell women all the time. You know, please don't skip your mammograms. You know, if you feel something that's not right, go get a mammogram. Definitely. Um, but definitely, yes. Yeah. So that was definitely a scary point in my life, and uh, it took me. I was because they had found it so early. Luckily for me, I didn't have to go through all the the serious treatment. Mm -hmm. um, I did have to get like um, a lumpectomy and then a, a second lumpectomy like the following month when they realized that I actually had um, forms of cancer uh, in that particular uh, breast area. But other than that, you know, it's just you know it was a process getting back you know together and getting in order. Yeah, and, um, you know, I've been good. I've been good. Good, ever since. good, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. And not just to go get your mammogram, like listen to your body. Always listen to your body because you're right. right. Women know their body. Now, because this was devastating news, I mean, obviously there was, you know, you always reflect when you go through hard times like that. Um, I know when I was diagnosed with my disease, that was a lot of, a lot of time was spent reflecting and what I want to do. And this is why Allie's Addict Show was born. And for you, it got you back into music. Um, yes, it actually did. Uh, it was under the, no, very unexpected, to be honest with you. It was like, when you get diagnosed with certain things, you know, it's just like, I don't know, it's like a, you start really reflecting, like you said, about your life and things that you regret not pursuing or doing. And um, it was just like a, a instant, like, light switch clicked in my head. I was like, you know what, while I'm going through this process, you know, Writing has always been like a therapy for me and music in general. Mm -hmm. I just started writing, and um, for me, that um, you know, that was like how I got through 
um, my health issues and, and so forth. And um, like like I said, so that back in like 2015, I started writing, and after all those years, I started and I wrote a, uh, my first verse in a long time to a song called uh, I named later called Broke. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I finished that up in like uh, you know in like no time, and I was I was talking to my husband. I was like, hey, you know, I want to get I want to record. And he wrote a verse to it, and um, yeah, and that's how that song was born. That was my first song, like, returning back to music. Well, I'm glad you did. And it placed you on the map where it caught the attention of DJ Sidereel from Minnesota and landed a spot on the Stamp of Approval Mixtape Song Bangers of the Year in 2015. So it right. was it was meant to be. It was meant to be caramel. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I guess you know, God was saying, hey, you've done enough resting and time for you to get back out there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, um, the song was written and recorded to reflect the frustrations of living check to check. And we've all been there. I mean, I'm still there. <laughs> but we've all been right. there. And it's frustrating and it's hard and it's very stressful. Um so Going back to the music scene for you, like you said, it, it it's therapeutic for you, writing and and music, and I think I believe that music should be all over the world and not TV, but that's my my thing. Um, so then, you returned to the music scene after that. You released "Back to the Grind," a sneak peek of what was to come um, from the highly anticipated debut mixtape, "Racial Profile." And that was released in September of 2016. And then, since then, <laughs> your music's been placed on mixtapes such as Never Falling Off, hosted by On By Society Movement, and DMV vs. Everybody 3, versus Everybody 3 vs. Look at me. Um, a popular DMV music plug local artist series. And you've also collaborated with several independent artists in various genres, from rock to pop, highlighting um, your versatility as an artist. Um, yeah, so, you know, I don't never like to be placed in the box. Yes, hip-hop and, you know, rap is my main thing and R&B. Uh, however, I love other genres of music. And a lot of people don't know, but actually, as a teen and a teenager, I was actually class classically trained. So I love opera, you know. Oh, I wow. love a lot of different things. <laughs> well, that's good. I don't, I don't, I, every time I hear somebody saying, well, this is my genre, it's like, okay, you're putting yourself in a box. Like you just said, <laughs> that's why I don't just do musicians. I do every independent artist because I didn't want to be put in a box. So I'm glad that you decided to collaborate. And I think a lot of artists should collaborate. I think you learn a lot from other people and you get to, like, experience different music genres. Right, and I think it actually helps you grow as an artist as well, but um, I definitely, I think, and also, too, it shows your versatility, uh, like I said, as an artist. It shows that you can um, go outside of your genre, you can go do other things, and so that's one reason why I love to collaborate with other uh, musicians from other genres. That's awesome. That is awesome. So in addition to your versatility, um, your songwriting abilities, vocal training, music production, and saxophone talent, you're soon going to be holding a bachelor's degree in business management from the University of Maryland University College. Yes, and I have five classes to go. Thank Yay! <laughs> Yay! That's awesome. So you're going to, what are you going to do with your um, degree? So, um, one thing I would like to do, like, with my degree is um, open up a, a fitness studio um, in reference to, like, my health and wellness side, because I still enjoy fitness. Mm -hmm. So, I definitely want to take that plunge and do that, um, but I want to really cater to, like, special populations. Um, I think there's a lack in that um, yes. um, area or populations for um, fitness. Mm -hmm. um, and most importantly, also, too, I want to... Um, you know, do some type of entertainment uh, organization. I'm actually working on some things now. So um, this degree will help me with, like, my Caramel Couture clothing line and also to creating a, a promotional and entertainment uh, company as well because, you know, by me networking with other people, it's, you know, I'm learning a lot. And mm -hmm. I had to kind of figure out some things, you know, as an indie artist, who's legit, who's not, and and so forth, and so I would like to be able to collab with other indie artists and, you know, do tours and shows and help them along the way, you know, wow. that side of the music. You're going to be a busy lady. <laughs> 
I'm going to try. Look, i got to put this degree to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, I love the end of your bio. <laughs> as you state, we as females should not feel the need to remove clothing, get hair weaves or implants just to get a record deal and make a sale. Let your music speak for yourself, for itself. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you go, girl. <laughs> no, um, you like you, you, when you listen to your songs, you know, it's you. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You have a very distinct voice. I mean, like I said, when I listened to you, Salt and Pepper popped into my head on one of the songs. TLC was kind of in there. Um, but like I said, it's caramel. When you hear caramel, you know, it's caramel. And um, I love that you're, like you're creating your own lane and you're a voice for the people, even, even not doing music, wanting to do fitness for, you know, populations that don't have that available to them. So you're forging a path and you're not just doing it for you. You're doing it for other people. And that's amazing in itself. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You so, <laughs> so now, because you've gone through everything you've gone through, Caramel, and now that you're back in music, if you had any kind of advice to give an artist, what kind of advice do you think you would give them based on everything that you've gone through? Like, because good Lord, woman, you've gone through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, and goodness gracious, I could do like a speech, but I would say this, and this is very important. You know, always stay true to yourself. You know, integrity is everything. Don't ever, ever, ever jeopardize your integrity just to, you know, get ahead. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I can say, you know, to tell an artist. You know, when your time, when it's your time, it's going to come. And just remember that. That's great advice because I know a lot of artists are very impatient. They want it yesterday and they've got to realize that it takes time. And I love that you say stay true to yourself. Um, I know we were talking before the interview and I said, you know, the reason I love supporting indie artists is the variety in music. Um, whereas if you listen to Top 40, it's hard to decipher who is who because everybody sounds the same. And that's the label telling them, you know, this is selling, so you have to sound like this. So I love that you said stay true to yourself because I think that's a big deal. And it will get you further than, you know, following the pack kind of deal. Now, what two songs are we going to hear from you, Caramel? Um, so you're going to hear Get Away. Mm -hmm. um, so Get Away pretty much is like um, a song that basically talks about, you know, even though you're going through your ups and downs, um, you still can get back up, you know, throw out the old, get rid of that baggage, and bring positive, you know, energy into your life and, and move forward. Mm -hmm. And the other song is Queen. Um, and Queen is basically, simply put, uh, a, a woman of empowerment type of song. It's a woman's anthem. Mm -hmm. And it's for everyone that, you know, that want to celebrate the strong woman in their lives. And it's a great song. I absolutely love it. Um, well, thank you. Um, that's the song that reminded me of Salt and Pepper. And then Try Away, when it first started, TLC popped into my head. Um, they're both amazing songs. I love Queen just because it is a woman empowerment song. <laughs> just so everybody knows. Um, now, you can purchase your music everywhere that people purchase their music online nowadays. Um, as well as people can go to your website, which is kara-mel.com. That'll be up on my website. People can click on it, go directly to your website, find out more about you. Um, anything new happens, like please come back on the show or get a hold of me. And besides even that, just let me know how you're doing in oh, life and everything. I just will. because, yeah, you've gone through so much and I just... I just want to know how you're doing. <laughs> um, but thank you for coming on my show. And thank you for sharing your story about everything. I, I totally appreciate it. And I think the more people share, the more other people realize, you know what, other people have gone through it, but they've risen from the occasion and they're still going strong. And that's exactly what you're doing. And hats off to you for doing that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you for coming on my show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Anytime. <laughs> and thank you for joining me on Allie's Attic Show. Keep checking my website because you never know what kind of surprise you're going to find in my attic. Cheers. <laughs>